Hello everyone, this is Vendor Guppy. In this video, I'll be discussing the Draw Faces operator. This is used to create an object by drawing a shape in the viewport. This draw object can then be used as boolean inside the Draw Faces operation, outside, or as a base for another design. The Draw Faces operator uses the look orientation of the viewport to draw the shapes. The depth or distance from the viewport of the drawn object is determined using the X marker. The X marker can be placed manually, and drawing from different angles can help you place the draw objects anywhere. You can use the C hat key to place the marker manually on the surface of any mesh at the mouse cursor. The draw operation has four shapes, and the marker has default positions in each of them. Using the number one hotkey for the black shape, the marker is located at the top left corner of the box. Using the number 2 hotkey for the polygonal shape, the marker is located in the second polygonal point. Using the number 3 hotkey for the circle shape, the marker is located at the center of the circle. Using the number 4 hotkey for the strip shape, the marker is also located in the second strips point, like polygonal. The marker can also be placed at the position of the 3D cursor using the L plus C hotkey and at the origin of the active object by pressing the C hat key in open space of the viewport. This will help you place objects on origin centers of any mesh. By pressing the shift plus tab hat key, you can change from using the marker to surface. Instead of the draw points depth using a single flat point, surface will project or snap the draw points to any mesh surface using the view angle. Draw points that did not have any surface to snap to will use a mean or average depth of all the other points in the draw shape. This is a great method for starting a base mesh when designing character armor, for example. You can also center lock the draw shape to the marker by pressing the Shift plus G hat key. In the draw operation, the marker also represents the 3D cursor. Placing the marker manually will also move the 3D cursor to that position. With polygonal and strips draw shape, the first point will instead lag to the marker or cursor. The circle draw shape will be the same as the box and it will lag to the center of the shape. If the marker is at the default position of the draw shape, the center lag will instead use the 3D cursor as the center point. Since the drawing is view-based, there also needs to be a feature that will make it easier to orient the draw objects to the different parts of the mesh. You can press E on a face under the mouse cursor, and it will face the viewport using its longest edge as the view y-axis. By pressing Shift plus E with the mouse cursor roughly at the center of an edge, the face under the mouse cursor will face the viewport with that edge as the view y-axis. Using Shift plus Alt plus E with the mouse cursor roughly at the center of an edge, the viewport will face that edge and with that edge as the view y-axis. This alignment method makes it easier to position the draw objects without needing to use rotation, especially with faces around the mesh that are facing different angles. This, however, might leave the viewport at weird orientations, but you can use the numpad hotkeys like 1 or 3 to make the viewport align to the front or side of the model. You can also grab the draw object using the G hat key. This lets you drag the draw shape anywhere in the viewport, but you can no longer affect its shape unless you press G again to disable grab. During grab, even though reshaping the draw object is disabled, you can still modify the different draw modes like bevel, inset, or array. Next, we have the draw modes. Using the hotkey Shift plus 1, we can switch to Bevel. It has three properties that can be modified, namely Bevel Width, Profile, and Segments. You can select which property to modify using the WFS hotkeys. W is for Width, F is for Profile, and S is for Segments. The active property will be bracketed in the Help UI to help you determine which one is active. You can then use the A or D hotkeys to increase or decrease their amount. The A and D hotkeys are universal, and it's used per draw mode to simplify and avoid too much clutter in the hotkeys.
Using the add keys shift plus 2, we have the draw mode rotate. Use the A hat key to rotate 1 degree counterclockwise. The D hat key to rotate 1 degree clockwise. The S hat key to rotate clockwise at 45 degree intervals. And the W hat key to rotate counterclockwise at 45 degree intervals. Using the hat keys as shift plus 3, we have the draw mode inset. Use the A or D hat keys to modify the inset thickness and the F hat key to get rid of the interfaces. Finally, we have the draw mode array by using the shift plus 4 hat keys. You can use the WASD hat keys as up, left, down, and right directional button to increase or decrease the array count. The help UI will show you how much array you have set in the X and Y grids. Use the L plus A or D to modify the offset between arrays. With rotation, you can choose to rotate only the individual array pieces by using the I hat key to toggle on the rotate individual property. Besides grabbing, the draw shape can also be locked by activating the draw modes, rotate, and array. You can use the R hat key to reset or clear the effects of the draw mode you are in. If you want to reset multiple draw modes down to the draw object, then use the shift plus R hat keys. Now let's discuss the mirror axis. The draw object will inherit the origin center of the active object, so their symmetry will line up together. You can activate the symmetry toggles in both phases, but this will only create the real geometry in phase 2. If you happen to forget an axis toggle during drawing mode, just select the draw object and use the draw modifiers operator to fix it. The draw and extract object will always have the mirror modifier after, even if no axis toggles were enabled. When toggling the mirror axis, the mesh is cut if the real geometry crosses another symmetry axis line, and that axis is also enabled. It will not cut, however, on the geometry that is produced by the solidify modifier. This can cause problems if applied or used as a Boolean object. Using the exact solver can solve the problem, but this may still arise in some situation. It is better if you deactivate the opposing axis and just position the draw object so it covers both symmetry axes. To solve the opposing axis problem, just press C with the mouse cursor and empty space in the viewport. This will position the X marker at the active object's origin center, and the drawn object will use that as its depth location when drawn. Any opposing axis enabled here will just result in doubles when the draw object is applied. Splitting the mesh when mirroring doesn't have a colored 3D widget like the auto mirror operator. You can instead use the small 3D widget at the upper right corner of the viewport as a guide to what axis to toggle on. Remember that XYZ is equals to RGB and those are the colors that represents the 3D widget. The solidify modifier can be modified in the second phase. The direction of the thickness will be the look at direction when we are drawing the face since it will of course project from the face. To control the thickness, you use the control plus mouse drag hotkeys, and the offset, you use the out plus mouse drag hotkeys. You can reset these values using the T hotkey. You can also use the out plus one, or two, or three hotkeys to set the offset at exactly negative one, zero, or one values, which makes it easier to put the draw object surface to surface when you're not using it for Boolean. If you want to modify the solidify thickness and offset after the drawing operation, just select the draw object and use the draw modifiers operator. Finally, we have the boolean operation right inside the drawing mode in phase 2. You can press the B hat key to activate it or use the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 hat keys. 1 is for difference, 2 is for union. 3 is for intersect and 4 is for slice. You can also toggle the solver from fast to exact using the F hat key. Pressing B will also deactivate it if you just want to draw object as a regular mesh. 
Using any Boolean operation will automatically turn it on if the draw faces operator is used again. You can disable this behavior by toggling on the Reset Draw or Extract Boolean in the Settings submenu. This also works for the Extract Faces operator. If you happen to forget using the Boolean operation in drawing mode, you can still use the Boolean Objects operator to do this. Just select the target and it will automatically Boolean it to the last object you've drawn on or extracted from. And that's it for this video. If you have any questions, be sure to use the comment section or the links in the description. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.